what's going on guys welcome back to the channel you know who it is by now Jimothy. now ladies and gents i thought i would do somewhat of a different video today and what i thought i would do is just have a little chat and a discussion with you guys about a few various Yu-Gi-Oh topics whilst i sleeve up my uh main deck mutants or my mutants however you want to pronounce it um i will be profiling this deck on the channel real soon i'm still waiting on a couple of cards to be honest um like another my mutant ultimus but um yeah definitely a deck i'm going to be profiling on the channel so what i wanted to talk about initially ladies and gents was yes i am using pink sleeves um mainly because they are pink which sounds a bit weird but uh because i play so many decks i kind of like to just keep a track of my decks and looking at the colors is just a great way of me just knowing that this deck has pink sleeves and i definitely know that it's going to be my turns but anyway I wanted to start off with, um, do you think that elitism exists in Yu-Gi-Oh ladies and gents? Um, the reason why I say this is mainly because obviously I've done a few deck profiles on the channel and I do watch a lot of other YouTubers and what I've been coming across is some really really negative comments regarding deck building and deck theory um, and deck profiles. So I just wanted to get your take on it and the reason why I say that is a lot of these comments are based around ratios, um, whether or not it's correct or incorrect to be, to be playing that said card um, and it's really really negative as it, in the, along the lines of uh, you don't really know what you're building, what you're doing for example, it's, it's really really negative and I just wanted to get your thought on it because obviously I've made a few deck profiles on my channel um, and for the most part you guys have been really really positive which is something that I really value here and the reason why I made this channel was to um, just to be able to be able to converse with you guys and just be able to kind of like improve my deck building, improve my overall gameplay and um, just basically get better at the game and hopefully one day go to um, like a regionals or even a nationals if I'm good enough. And that was the whole idea behind building this channel, just to improve, to converse with you guys because I've been playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh um, and a lot of the Yu-Gi-Oh that I do play, I play typically by myself, well, say typically, I was typically playing by myself and um, I just wanted somebody to basically bounce ideas off because a lot of the guys that I were playing with have got lives, they're busy, they've got children, etc. Um, but I'm, I'm diverging, but the point that I wanted to ask you guys is what do you think about elitism? Now, I believe there's no correct or incorrect way to build a deck, um, so to speak. There is obviously more efficient ways to build a deck and more efficient ways to play a deck. But for the most part, you build the deck how you want it to run. If it does or doesn't do something, then that's obviously on you. And um, if you're going for the most competitive build, obviously there's going to be cards in there which are probably considered staples. Um, but for the most part, it's up to you. You have free reign, so you can build the deck however you like. Um, and that's kind of partly the reason why I started net decking um, the net deck series, which will be returning soon, is because it's based on the theory that we use net deck as just a way of just getting an idea of how to build the deck or just seeing how the deck plays basically and some of the cards that you could use in there it's by no means a template to go out and then build the deck exactly how you see it on the net even though some people do um but just the negative comments surrounding it just makes me it kind of puts a little bit of a tin on the uh Yu-Gi-Oh community but basically because it's just it's negative it's just it's just not needed if it's constructive criticism that is fine everybody's down for some constructive criticism but if it's just largely in part negative and just um targeting like basically calling incompetent on the deck builders part it's it's just it's just not something that's needed but what do you guys think have you guys ever built a deck and just had somebody kind of like shame it or just say that you don't know what you're doing you built the deck incorrectly um you should or should not use those ratios uh i just wanted to get your thoughts on it really um so yeah but also i wanted to talk about decks where do you see the meta going at the moment i was considering making a video on the um top five or rogue strategies that were going to be going forward within the next format but i'm kind of holding off on that video mainly because i realized that a ban list is coming up and currently we all know that dragon link is just running away with the meta um i wouldn't say it's it's probably the most one of the most representative representative decks of the meta but it's not necessarily the most powerful um especially with the thing the way that virtual world is going at the moment um basically spitting out the true kings of all calamities like it's nobody's business 
Um, so I wanted to get your thoughts on the meta. Now, in, in my opinion, I do think that Virtual Worlds are really strong and I think a ban list and a few more um, additions to the actual deck will definitely make for a very, very strong competitive deck. Especially as it can make rank 6s, 3s and 9s real easy as well as Synchro 6s, 3s and 9s, well say Synchro 3s but Synchro 6s and Synchro 9s very very easy like it's nobody's business. Um, and especially with um, Virtual World Kayubi Shenshen which I managed to pull. Um, and I have got a Virtual World deck coming, I'm just waiting on some Lulus because they've just skyrocketed in price which is just ridiculous. But um, yeah. What do you think of the meta? Um, I'm quite intrigued as to where we're gonna go from here because as, as bad as Dragon Link is, because dragons have got so much support in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, it's not difficult for them to um, <clears throat> pivot into a different line of play and being able to um, combo off into a different style of board. Obviously, there's gonna be some major hits. Um, in my opinion, I think Alp is definitely gonna be a card that's gonna be touched on the ban list whether that be that whether that's going to be it's forbidden or limited to one i don't think limiting would do any, do anything to it to be honest because typically people only play at one anyway um but i do think it's a card that's been very very um it's hot on the radar basically because uh, because of the nature of the card but um i do think that and as well as oh in infant overnights now these two decks have kind of been running away with them recently but i do think with regards to the releasing of products, Konami are looking at these decks and thinking, well, we need to squeeze, either squeeze the last bit of money out of those two decks, or we need to just put a stop to it so we can sell new products to the player base. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that basically. But what do you think, where do you think the meta's going? And what do you think the rogue strategies are? Like I am a big fan of rogue strategies. I love them. I love things that are a bit quirky, a bit out of left field, and a bit, um, a bit difficult for your opponent to read really. I like decks that do do have a unique play style. That's why I like things like Malfies and Appliances, things that are really, really different. Now, they might not be the most powerful deck, obviously, but the fact that they can do something unique and different is what I like, and not just end on the same old board with Boral Old Savage Dragon, uh, Herald of the Art Light, uh, or Infernoble Knight Charles, and God Phoenix Gear Freed, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, do, I do like to see decks doing something different, so, what would you argue your favorite rogue decks are? Um, mine at the moment, what do I like playing at the moment? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm quite into Shirinus. I wouldn't even say it's a rogue strategy. It's just something that's really fun to play. Um, banishing zombie monsters and being able to get effects off them being banished is something that I find really cool. Um, and just being able to mess around with a synchro engine in a zombie in a, in a zombie style deck is really cool. As long as, as well as mixing it with the the more no, uh, notable zombie deck like Doom King Baylor Drak and Glow Up, Glow Up Bloom and all that kind of stuff. I do think it's quite a fun deck. I also like messing around with Malfis. I'm actually trying to build a Malfi Tri Brigade, Tri Brigade deck. Uh, I can't even pronounce it. Tri Brigade deck, and uh, I am just waiting on. I think I'm waiting on a Shirag. I've got the rest, but I'm waiting on a Shirag and probably another Fractal. But um. Yeah, I do like the way that Malfi Tri Brigades are looking at the moment. I haven't quite refined the build, but it's something that I'm looking at. But definitely, definitely get at me with your your comments in the comment section on decks that you think are kind of overlooked. Like, definitely the, the, the meta does get dominated. And at, at the moment with the current pandemic, we've seen a lot of like online play. And um, typically that's what makes the most noise. But there are decks out there that do bits and pieces. Burning Abyss, for example, that deck is still going. That's crazy how long that deck's been going for. Um, Shadows, like I, Shadows, wow. I love playing Shadows at the moment. And that's partly in, in fact to Team Kings of Games, which is another YouTuber that I watch. His enthusiasm and just knowledge of the deck just really got me into it and made me just actually wanna play it. Um, and it does, it actually does wonders. Um, especially especially putting up Winder and just being technical and being aware of your plays and what your card effects can and cannot do. I think it's a, it's a fantastic uh, deck to be honest and it's really budget as well. Um, the Shadow Monsters do not cost a lot. I remember when Shadow Fusion was like £10 in the UK which is crazy and now it's it's, it's, it's like pennies and it's such a powerful card. Um, but yeah, but yeah. But ladies and gents, that was just me. I thought I'd do a different style of video today. Yes, it has been a little bit waffly but um, 
Because of the current pandemic as well, I'll just let you guys know, the post has just absolutely slowed down. I mean, I've been waiting on these mutant cards for I don't even know how long now, probably about about three weeks or so. Um, it's, well, sorry, two weeks or so since Phantom Rage came out. I've been waiting because I ordered a few of these cards um, and it's just been so long as well as a few other cards that I'm waiting on. It's just been so long for these cards to arrive, but hey ho, it is what it is. Well, ladies and gents, that is the end of the video. Like I said, we will have a Mutant deck profile up for you guys real soon. As long as I get my next Ultimus, I will definitely profile it as well as a couple of test hands and maybe a combo video, but we'll see how that goes, ladies and gents. But anyway, we have arrived at the end of another video. If you did like this content, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I will definitely, definitely see you guys in the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Peace.